Hey everybody, Dr. Robin McKay here. Welcome back to your weather report. This is the check-in every week for my Facebook group, The Actualization Zone. So if you're over on YouTube and you're watching the recording, we're gonna drop a link to The Actualization Zone in the comments here so you can find us or you can just head over to Facebook and type in The Actualization Zone and it should pop right up and you're welcome to join us over there. If you're already a member of The Actualization Zone, you know that this is our time to check in. It's the weather report, I call it, because I've always loved the weather from the time I was a little kid. And now I just check in with the non-physical influences, the emotions, the energetics of what are coming up for us this week as talented, intelligent, and intuitive people as we are stepping into our own expression of our most highly actualized selves. And as I was tuning in today, I was thinking about even that word actualization has some charge to it. You know, from the time I was a little kid, I was always involved in some kind of achievement, some kind of wanting to be my very best. I had influences from my father and from my family around actualizing. And then I became a psychologist. And in psychology, there were some people who focused on what's wrong with people and helping people get back to kind of air quotes normal. And then there were some psychologists who were fo focused on self-actualization, on optimal human development and what that meant. And that's the camp that I came from in counseling psychology. I have many, many influences in my life uh, from those, those professionals and those, those mentors of mine who came out of the optimal human development realm. And when we think about actualization, I remember when I first started working in psychology and I was studying and I was learning everything that I could learn about how people transform and how they actualize. And I remember having a meeting with somebody who worked at the Veterans Administration Hospital in Kansas, where I eventually did my first rotation for my practicum experience. It was a very early training experience as a psychology student. And I talked about actualization and they were all like, oh, this is not the place for you because there were so many sick people. There were people with trauma. There were people with PTSD, all the, all the major problems that people had, homelessness and illnesses. And it was really a sick place of physically sick and a mentally, emotionally sick place where people went to heal just to get back to normal. And I knew I didn't fit in there, but I wanted to have that experience nonetheless. And it taught me a lot about where I belong and where I don't belong. And what became clear to me is that I wanted to work with people who were feeling pretty good already. In psychology, we call those people the worried well those who go into therapy or go into counseling because they're not feeling their very best. And even beyond that, as I left clinical work and I began pursuing my coaching practice and my executive coaching clients started coming into me, a lot of them came from a place of burnout, but they were also exceptional people. And still, when we talk about actualization, when we talk about living our best lives, it sounds a little bit like Oprah, I know, so bear with me here. But really, I think that the overwhelming sentiment around actualization is it seems like it takes a whole lot of work. You've got to work really, really hard. You've got to sacrifice. You've got to do blood, sweat, and tears, that kind of thing. And you've already accomplished so much using that kind of mentality and practice and and way of being in the world that another iteration of that in order to actualize just feels like, forget it, I'm not going to do it. So part of my mission here in coming on and talking about actualization and in starting the actualization zone and, of, and opening the doors to my new academy, the McKay Academy of Actualization, is to reframe and re, I'll call it recalibrate what it means to actualize. We're going to take back that word because I think it's been distorted and very much diluted within the pop culture for sure, and even within the field of psychology as well. So I'm going to just be real curious about how that evolves, how we collectively 
reclaim the word actualization for ourselves. Cause I don't think it means that I have to work harder. I don't think that it means that I have to strive for more. I actually think that the best way to manifest the experiences that you want to do to be and to have in this life, I think the best way is just to become the person who already has them. And that's the actualization. And what if you're already actualized? What if that's already within you? What if that's not something that you have to pursue or hone or sacrifice? What if it's just already inside of you? What if that's your natural state of being? And if it is, how does that shift things for you? As you think about what you're meant to be creating and what you're meant to be contributing and what you're meant to be mastering at this time in the world. So you're welcome for my opening salvo on actualization. And now we're gonna jump into the weather report here. If you are watching live, say hello in the comments. I'd love to greet you and say hello back. And if you're watching the recording, please do the same. I always circle back and check back in with everybody to see how they're doing this week. So this week, did anybody see the, the lunar eclipse last night, the blood moon? Holy smokes, it was big and dark and my dog was a little bit nutty last night and I've heard people have had a hard time sleeping. I didn't, I took a little extra magnesium last night so I was out like a light, but um, it was a really highly activating evening, I think for a lot of people. Um, but it's also, I always like to look at full moons and then eclipses. I don't know a lot about astrology by the way. So I just look at it as kind of a metaphor for what's going on in my life. And I look at that as a time of closing doors, of letting go of things that are over, of closing chapters of books, of closing entire books of my life. And I also look at it as an opportunity for a new beginning. So that's what today is about, a new beginning. Whatever you were experiencing yesterday or in the last year, the last three years, the last nine years even, and beyond, can just be complete. So today's a new day, and it is a new beginning. And as I've tuned into the energies, to the weather of this week, um, one of the first things that comes up is it's very similar to what we talked about last week. There continues to be mental, emotional, and physical healing going on on a deep cellular level. So our bodies are shifting. You might be finding yourself holding on to more inflammation or more water, retaining more water than usual. Uh, but just know that the overarching theme of this week continues to be around mind, body, spirit, healing, and transformation, like a deep cellular healing. And that requires patience, but it also requires nurturing and self-care. Being kind to yourself, being kind to your body. So many intuitive intelligent, high achievers live from the neck up. I certainly did for a long time and you probably do as well. We're not even always aware of what's going on below our necks. Not aware of if I've got a little crink in my shoulder or kink. Not even aware that I might have to go to the bathroom until it's so blatantly apparent that I have to go, that I have to get out and run down the hallway to the bathroom. And that actually happens quite a bit with high achievers. We just get conditioned to override the needs of our bodies. But this week is a call to re-attune yourself to your body's needs and give your body what it needs. So if you're feeling a little bit crunchy, if you're feeling a little bit you know, swollen or inflamed or, or bloaty, then give yourself what you need. Give your body what it needs, stretching, yoga, walking. And in fact, that's another big part of this week is reconnecting with your body and reconnecting with the ground underneath you, with this earth that we're living on. I run around barefoot a lot. I live in Arizona and my husband's always admonishing me because we've got scorpions. We've got all kinds of creepy crawlers here in the desert, but I run around in my bare feet a lot. And it gives me an opportunity to get my feet on the ground to connect with the earth, which helps me become more aware of my physical body. So maybe that's something that you can do. Do that carefully, of course, 
but maybe take off your feet, go outside, walk around a little bit, notice what you notice. And it also, there's nothing better than putting your feet in the green grass or in the, in the brown dirt and being present, paying attention on purpose with an open heart in that moment, paying attention to your own heartbeat, paying attention to the cool breeze on your skin, but being present with your physical body is a major source of awareness and allows you to access your creativity. It allows you to access your intuition and it allows you to just get out of your head, get out of the thinking, 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 and be for a little while. And I don't know if you remember last week, if you haven't, you might want to go back and, and watch the video from last week, but there was also a big theme on waiting last week. And that is the same this week as well, but waiting in terms of preparing, not in terms of being patient, impatient, excuse me, but just know that things are being woven together behind the scenes. So whether you're waiting to hear on a new position at work, or you're waiting to hear who's going to work with you next, if you're a, an entrepreneur, or if you're waiting for something to drop in or something to land or to hear back from somebody, know that things are going on behind the scenes that are maybe outside of your awareness and certainly outside of your scope, but things are still moving. And last week I talked a lot about baking a cake, about how when you prepare all the ingredients and you mix the batter and you put the batter into the pan and then you put the pan with the batter into the oven and you turn on the heat of the oven. That's what's going on right now. The energies are very much waiting, but we have to trust that the oven is doing its work, that the oven is adding heat. Now, if your oven is broken or if you forgot to turn on your oven, that's different. So there's a discernment, isn't there? And if nothing's happening and you say, well, I'm waiting because I'm supposed to wait, well, just check to make sure your oven's on. Because if the oven isn't on for the cake and also for your creations, you're going to want to turn up the heat. And, and that's easy with an oven. You just go over and press a button and turn it on. With the heat of your, your manifestations, your desires, it is the, the inner fire that we're talking about, your passion your curiosity, your interest, your heart's desires. That's the flame. That's the energy or the frequency that's going to make the waiting time go quick, more quickly and bring about those optimal results that you're wanting to create for yourself. So it's wait, but it's preparation in waiting. And it's also making sure your fire is turned on, making sure the heat is on. So what does that look like in reality? When I see a waiting, when I see waiting energy, when I feel waiting energy, what I realize is that I, it's time for me to go back into, I have a heart's desire box that I keep on my meditation space. So it's time to go back in and revisit my heart's desires to tune into my own heart and to ask, what is my best move? What is the best thing for me to do next? Is it to do anything or is it to rest? Is it to deeply heal? Is it to listen? Is it to take a nap? Is it to make a phone call? Is it to send an email? What is the best approach for this waiting period? And as it turns out this week, this is a really important thing as we're in the waiting period and as we're starting a new chapter, actually, with these new beginnings that I was talking about earlier, and that's to practice forgiveness. Forgiveness for yourself, forgiveness for others, forgiveness for life. Forgiveness is a really potent practice. I'm going to call it a practice, not an emotion, because it is a conscious mindful practice, forgiving yourself, forgiving others. Um, but it is something to just be able to say you're sorry, to be able to say you're sorry. So one of the practices that I love to use comes out of the Hawaiian traditional practices. It's called Ho'oponopono. And my teachers, my Hawaiian teachers taught me once that 
Ho'oponopono means to make what's right more right. To make what's right more right. So in the forgiveness process, there are four phrases that I was taught to go along with Ho'oponopono. I'm sorry. I forgive you. Please forgive me. And thank you. I'm sorry. I forgive you. Please forgive me. And thank you. And whatever you're focused on with forgiveness, it could be forgiveness of yourself for a past error. It could be forgiveness of somebody else for an assault on your person, for an assault on your consciousness. And remember this, there's a lot tied to that word forgiveness. Some people think that if I forgive the person, that means that I'm making whatever they did okay. And that's not the case. My Christian friends will say, forgive the sinner, not the sin. I don't know how I feel about that, but that is one way of thinking about it. Just another way of thinking about it is just practicing loving kindness around forgiveness. Loving kindness, meaning um, freedom from harm, caring for oneself joyfully, and wishing freedom from harm for other people as well. This is a deep practice, this forgiveness practice, but it is also a, an important one, especially when you're in a period of waiting, forgiveness. So there are two practices then that I just mentioned. One is the Ho'oponopono, those four phrases. I love you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I forgive you and I love you. So that's one practice. And you can just focus on the person or the experience or yourself and repeat those phrases out loud or to yourself until you feel a sense of relief. And then the other one is a loving kindness practice. May you be peaceful. May you be joyful. May you be free from inner and outer harm and may you care for yourself joyfully. So the loving kindness meditation or practice is another way of releasing connection that unforgiveness creates. The hooks, the cords, the anger, the resentment, the frustration, just letting all of those go. And when you do, you're actually freeing yourself. Freedom from harm, freedom from fear, freedom from resentment from anger. And it's from this place that you get to experience yourself as an actualized being. And of course you can experience yourself at any point you want as an actualized being. But my, my thought is that when you do these practices, the Ho'oponopono or the loving kindness practice, you're actually releasing the energetics that keep you bound to the person, to the experience, to the memory. And it's in releasing the energies, the hooks, the cords, the implants, the sticky, icky, cobwebby, spider webby energies that you set yourself free. So with that, that's the energy update for this week. It's about getting yourself regrounded in your body. It's about continuing to wait to prepare, but in the waiting and the preparation, forgiveness, surrender. See what happens. All right, so if you found this helpful, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Let me know what you're taking away and um, what's coming up for me. Well, we have the announcement of the McKay Academy of Actualization coming soon. If you are not on the wait list for, to be one of the first to know when we open the doors, you can get yourself on the wait list. It's uh, Dr. dot com forward slash wait list to get on there. And we'll put those in the, in the notes or in the comments as well for you. And um I think that's all I've got right now coming up. 
I think that that's, but that's a lot because we're going to be gathering to be really exploring what it means to be actualized. And you're going to get my best, my very best of 22 years of developing these practices and these methods in order to create the life that I've had for myself, but also that I've helped other people. They're very high achieving, intuitive, intelligent leaders create for themselves as well. All right. Okie doke. I will see you in the actualization zone until next time.